Hi guys. Oh, that kicked on quicker than I was ready for. Um, so we are picking up with uh, the psychology of pandemics. This is the second part of the lecture series for this. So we're going to start talking about in this part, how do we cope with the emotional impact of a pandemic? Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is education. Um, we want to make sure that we are getting our information from factual and reliable sources. So for the coronavirus, um, the best places for us as Americans to get that information is from the CDC and WHO. And you will find um, links to both of these organizations on your PowerPoints. Uh, the next thing uh, that we want to start talking about is accentuating the positive. Um, how we tend to think about things sets the tone for how we're going to feel about things. If we start to focus on, so for example, let's take social isolation right now. If we start to focus on being forced into social uh, isolation, um, we might start to feel like we have a lack of control over our life. Um, and when this happens, this can lead to feelings of um, powerlessness and helplessness in our lives. Um, so instead, what we want to do um, is focus on the things that we are still able to control. Because when we do that, um, we start to gain a sense of empowerment. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, thoughts and emotions. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is basically what you feel, you think. In other words, I'm sorry, what you think you feel. Uh, so in other words, our thoughts generate our emotions. Second, we are, as individuals, you and me both, able to choose what to believe and what not to believe. You are the person that is in control of your thoughts. Third, if you want to change your mood, you have to change the way that you think. Um, our emotions really are um, objective descriptions of how we're feeling. And so they need to be treated like facts. So in other words, don't try and argue um, with your emotions. Um, facts don't respond to logic. Um, if you're feeling sad, you're feeling sad. If you are feeling angry, you are feeling angry. If you are feeling anxious, you're feeling anxious. Um, and if you've ever been upset um, or sad and someone's just come up to you and said, don't feel like that, you want to go, thank you so much. That was, that really helped. Gosh, I just going to tell myself not to feel that anymore. And I no longer feel those emotions. It doesn't work. Um, if anything, trying to argue ourselves or talk ourselves out of an emotion um, can make us feel worse. Um, because what we're actually telling ourselves and what we're actually doing is questioning our own ability uh, to know what we're feeling. So emotions are not the place to go to change your mood. You have to change the thoughts that produce them. Um, and because emotions are produced by thoughts, uh, it's best to think of them as products. So think of uh, emotions. Emotions are thoughtless reactions to thoughts. They have emotions have no capacity to think or reason independently. Emotions simply reflect the content of what you're thinking without questioning whether what you're thinking um, was produced by anything logical or rational. Well, we know uh, it's easier and better to argue with our thoughts than to argue with our emotions. And because our thoughts are judgments, our thoughts are interpretations about what's going on. And because of that, they can be challenged by logic um, and their accuracy can be challenged. You can reason with your own thoughts by deciding whether your judgments whether your interpretations, whether your evaluations of yourself, of others, of the situation contain logic or, um, or are accurate. Okay, so let's flip to the next slide. This is going to be we're still coping with the emotional impact of a, of a pandemic. We're going to be talking about preparations and readiness. Um, 
taking action, having a plan can really help um, begin to alleviate some of our, our anxiety and help reduce some of our um, anxiety that we feel during um, situations that are uncertain, um, scary, and threatening. Developing a schedule that kind of resembles the daily life of, of what we had before the pandemic or the crisis. Um, so for us, uh, maybe looking at what was our daily schedule like before social isolating um, and sheltered in place became a thing. Uh, and what this can do is it helps provide a sense of routine and normalcy to our lives. So uh, one of the things we want to structure our days um, as much as we can as to what they looked like before. So we want to get up at the same time as before. We want to prepare, um, excuse me, prepare for the day ahead. Um, and this means taking a shower, getting dressed, um, having meals, eating meals around the same time of the day, trying to create a space to work in, um, and also remembering to leave time to have some fun. Um, maintaining our regular sleep cycle. Um, so all of these things help us feel prepared and they can help give us a sense of uh, control when so many things feel like they're out of our control. Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about is understanding some common reactions to pandemics. Um, and kind of understanding common reactions helps to normalize them, um, helps us to realize that we are not alone. Um, and some of the things that we're thinking, feeling, or, or that we're worried about. So when we talk about uh, personal um, and relationship changes, so uh, especially for um, all of you right now, uh, things are very uncertain around really how the rest of the semester is going to go. Even though um, professors are giving you an idea of what it's going to look like, we don't really know what this looks like, what kind of issues we're going to have, what kind of problems we're going to run into. Um, and I know for me personally, uh, this is very, very different than I usually have the end of my, the last of my semester go. Um, yes, we do lectures uh, typically, but we do um, the documentaries that we're not doing, the guest speakers that we're not doing, and we do a lot of what I consider in classes in the past have considered to be a lot of the really fun, interactive um, in-class activities that uh, I am so sorry that you guys aren't going to get to experience or we're going to you know, try and have to do them a little differently or you'll have to um, do them out on your own. Um, but because of this uh, uncertainty about our future um, and what things are going to look like in the next three months, six months, nine months, it um, increases our stress, increases our anxiety. Um, our relationships are kind of changing as well. We are spending a lot more time at home um, with friends, probably family, uh, with family members. Um, and that can be wonderful and stressful at the same time. And because a lot of our emotions are heightened, it can also add to uh, stress. Um, we can find ourselves getting frustrated more easily, getting... Um, angry more easily, um, feeling like people are getting on your nerves on purpose, they're purposely doing things. Um, and I think one of the things uh, I would tell you is when that happens, and to know that it's completely no uh, uh, normal, when someone feels like they are just on your last nerve and that they absolutely just did that thing on purpose to annoy you, they probably didn't. Um, and what we can get caught up in is uh, you statements, um, always never statements. So you might be like, you always do this or you never do that. Um, what I would suggest is that you focus on I statements um, and focus on how you feel and what you are experiencing um, and explain that to your, your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your parents, your siblings, um, instead of focusing on the person's um, behavior. Any pre-existing problems, any maladaptive um, coping behaviors that we had or coping skills that we have um, might pop up again. And so it's something that we need to be on the lookout for and mindful of. Um, work disruptions is the next one. So if you are lucky enough to still be working, um, you might be more tired and more stressed than you usually are. And this can lead to poor performance. 
Um, we might see more conflicts with um, supervisors and coworkers because of our stress levels. Uh, and then also, uh, and this you know kind of goes into our personal, um, but also our work, uh, worrying about our finances. Um, how are we gonna pay our bills? Are we gonna be able to afford our home, our apartment? Are we gonna get evicted? Um, are we gonna be able to have the same kind of standard of living um, after the pandemic that we did before? And the last one um, we're gonna talk about is at-risk populations. One of the big ones that we're hearing about are the elderly. And one of the reasons that the elderly are so susceptible to um, infections of this kind is because uh, many of them have chronic or disability, uh, dis disabling illnesses, excuse me. Um, they can have nutritional defects. And then a lot of times we find um, the elderly population, uh, you know, ha lacks family or social support. Um, so again, uh, these became, uh, become even more magnified during a crisis. Uh, children can be severely infected by um, pandemics or crisis in society, uh, and it can begin to affect um, all aspects of child development. And part of this is because children have a uh, limited understanding of what's going on, and they also have a limited way of communicating what they're thinking and feeling. So if you have any children in your life, um, one of the things you might start to notice is they start complaining more of headaches or stomach aches um, and typically children are better at verbalizing how they feel or when they don't feel well than they are with um, verbalizing anxiety or fear uh, so just know that if you have a child in your life that is talking more about having headaches and tummy aches this could be a sign of um, increased anxiety and what we are finding is most all of us are finding our mental health um, being negatively affected during this time. Our anxiety is increasing, maybe depression's increasing, we're more stressed, we're more, we're more worried. Um, and so that's where we're gonna go in um, and talk a little bit more about coping with um, the emotional impact of a pandemic. So let's flip um, the next slide and it's gonna be coping during the uh, coronavirus crisis and you're gonna see things uh, that Brene Brown um, quote, um, building resistance and self-care. So building resistance and self-care look an awful lot alike. Um, one of the things that this uh, recent events have shown us is that we have um, things in our life that we have no control over. Um, and one of the ways that we build resistance and take care of ourselves is by finding areas that we can, we can have some control over uh, and manage our stress. So learning stress reduction techniques, creating a safe environment um, for us to live in during this foreseeable future, um, bringing structure and maintaining structure and routine in our lives uh, is going to be important. Maintaining and keeping healthy diets, keeping a regular sleep cycle, um, exercising are all going to be um, essential. And one of the questions uh, on your upcoming discussion questions I'm going to ask is for you guys to talk about some of the self-care activities that you did for your homework assignment. And then um, staying connected. Friends and family during this time are gonna make a huge difference. Uh, how do we take care of our social needs while participating or practicing in social isolation? Um, it's going to make us expand how we think about um, social connection. Um, it's going to make us increase the ways that we stay connected uh, with friends, families, co-workers, classmates, professors, um, neighbors, communities. You know, some of the things that, you know, we might do, start setting aside daily time to FaceTime friends and family, setting up uh, group chats and calls with families to watch movies. Um, if you're living alone right now, you might consider if you've got a friend a sibling or someone, you might consider asking someone to move in with you for a while during this time. Uh, and another one of the questions that I'm going to ask you to talk about in the discussion questions are creative ways to stay connected with others while we are practicing social isolation. Validating emotions. So recognizing not only yours, but other people's emotions and feelings around the coronavirus. 
um, it's going to be important uh, to set boundaries for yourself. Um, some of those things that we talked about way back at the very beginning of the semester. Um, but not only is it going to be important to set your own boundaries, it's going to be important to respect the boundaries of others. Everyone reacts differently uh, to stressful situations and being aware of our differences, validating concerns, um, and providing support when it's needed is a helpful way to contribute during a stressful time. Uh, and then focusing on cases of success involving the coronavirus. So while there is going to be undoubtedly extensive media coverage on the coronavirus related to deaths, um, the vast majority of those who con contract the disease have mild symptoms and are able to recover at home. So it's going to be important to seek out success stories rather than simply consuming um, all the worst case scenarios that are filling your social media sites. And then also it's going to be important to focus on the positives in your life. Um, are you getting more time with family members? Um, are you finding that you're able to get more sleep because you're spending more time at home? Are you finding that life is slowing down a little bit for you? Um, and so this is going to be one of the things that I'm going to want you to discuss uh, in the discussion questions is um, how things have uh, success stories that you've seen in the news or how things have changed for you or are different for you um, in a more positive way. Uh, another thing that we're going to talk about uh, living your everyday life as much as you can. Continue to live life every day. Um, enjoy impulse buys. Um, enjoy, you know, any kind of small act that you can do for yourself or someone else that brightens or sweetens your day. Um, stop and take a breath. And I mean, seriously, that's it. Just breathe. So what we're going to do um, to end this lecture, so we're at the end of the lecture, um, I'm going to do a, a grounding technique and I might find, I might just pop these up periodically for you guys to come and take a look at uh, to see if they help you in any way. This one is a body awareness technique. Um, so what it does is it helps to bring you into the here and now. What we find um, when our depression is getting worse, when our anxiety is getting worse, we can start to ruminate. So when we ruminate, we're oftentimes spending our time in the past thinking about what's happened in the past. Um, when we are anxious, uh, we're typically worried about what might happen in the future. Um, so by doing this uh, body awareness technique, hopefully it's going to bring us back into the, the here and now, into the space and time that we're living in right now. Um, and it's going to help by directing you to focus on the sensations in your body. So while we're doing this, I want you to pay special attention to the physical sensations created by each step. Um, and this is going to be one I'm going to uh, ask you to talk about during the uh, discussion questions, what this activity was like for you. So the first thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and sit up um, and you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Otherwise, go ahead and keep your eyes open. What you're going to do is take five long, deep breaths through your nose and exhale through your mouth. So go ahead, inhale, uh, inhale in and pause at the top and exhale out. Go ahead and take that second long deep breath in. Hold it at the top for just a second and then exhale that breath out through your mouth. Starting in your stomach and bringing that breath up through your chest, go ahead and take a long deep breath in. And pause at the top for just a second. Using those abdominal muscles, go ahead and start pushing that breath out, exhaling it out through the mouth. Take a long deep breath in. Pause at the top and exhale it out through your mouth. One more time. One long deep breath in. Pause at the top and exhale it out through your mouth. Go ahead and let your breathing come back to normal. 
The next thing that you're going to do is place your feet flat on the floor. Begin to wiggle your toes, curl and uncurl your toes several times. And while you're doing that, spend a moment noticing the sensation in your feet. The next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and stomp your feet on the ground several times. Uh, so you're going to want to pay attention to the sensations in your feet and your legs as um, you make contact with the ground. The next thing you want to do is clench your hands into fist and then release the tension. Go ahead and do this 10 times. And notice the tension in your fingers and your palms. Okay, the next one you're going to want to do is press your palms together uh, like this. Uh, you're going to press them together and we're going to hold this pose for 15 seconds. And you're going to pay attention to the feeling of tension in your hands and arms. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to rub our palms together briskly. Notice the sound and the feeling of warmth. And finally, reach your hands up over your head like you're trying to touch the sky. Stretch for this like five seconds. And then bring your arms down and let them relax at your sides. And finally, we're going to take five more deep breaths and notice the feeling of calm in your body. Go ahead and take inhale deeply through the nose. Pause at the top and exhale that breath out through the mouth. Once again, inhale through the mouth uh, and through the nose. Pause at the top and exhale the breath out through the mouth. From your stomach going up to your chest, inhale in through the nose, pausing at the top, exhale out through the mouth, inhale in through the nose, pause at the top, using your stomach muscles, exhale that breath out, pushing the breath out, uh, using your abdominal muscles through the mouth, and one more Deep inhale in through the nose, pausing at the top, and exhaling it out through the mouth. Okay, that is the end of to this week's lecture. Uh, you will have um, two videos up, and then I will open up a discussion on Canvas. There will be five discussion questions, and those will be due on Friday by 2 p.m. You will need to answer all five questions and then respond to at least one of your um, classmates. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or send me a text. I will see you guys next week.